What is up, you guys? It is your boy John here from Puma Plot. Welcome back to another on the farm. And today, guys, you know, I wasn't going to show you this, but things sometimes just don't go as easy as you would hope or you would plan. Well, let's take a look at this. So, I was about to get the Power King 1614 with the umbrella and the sprayer, the Femco 25 gallon ATD, ATV sprayer. I was about to get it out of the shed, I was going to go spray the garden. Uh, this will be the last time we spray the garden this year. It's looking pretty nasty. And and just for fun, I was like, you know what? Let me look. I, I thought last time we used this thing, and I know we did. We put bleach in it just to keep the stuff from growing. Uh, something, about, something about the water down here at the farm, being that it's well water and Roundup. They don't they don't like each other long term but if you put some bleach in there usually it's fine and dandy and you're good to go i will warn you this is kind of gross but this time it decided to to completely get nasty i'm not gonna put my camera all the way down in there but it is disturbing <laughs> it's it's just purely disturbing how nasty it is inside that sprayer tank so I guess I'm gonna go out in the middle of the garden and uh, try to flush it out using the drain on the side. <sighs> I guess I'll take you guys along for the ride. I wasn't really gonna show you guys. I had to show you guys that. It was just, ugh, it's disgusting. It makes me wanna, kinda makes me wanna puke. I'm not gonna lie, it's so nasty looking. But uh, let's get the old Power King 1614 fired up and head outside. Gotta turn the fuel on first. Pull. You gotta pull the choke lever, which is down here. Make sure neutral. It's been a while since she's been outside. Come on now, don't embarrass me, tractor. I know you can start. So you guys, we are out here in the middle of the garden and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rinse the sprayer out out here in the middle of the garden. Try to get all that mold and crap out of the sprayer. Um, the last thing I want to do is run the pump right now and get any of us in the pump and mess things up. So let's uh, try to open the sprayer first. <laughs> get it cleaned up. Uh, so we put normally normally these sprayers just have a cap on the end here we went ahead and put a valve in here uh, just to extend it past the wood here of our carrier and plus you can take that off and not get chemical on your hand which is kind of nice i'm not gonna lie i kind of like that feature so let me fire up the hose here we got the pump already on let's get to it the garden is absolutely disgusting right now with weeds if you guys recall normally we would plant pumpkins here but we decided to let it kind of rest this year. Uh, we were gonna plant some kind of cover crop and then we just never did with everything going on with mom. Uh, we just didn't have time. So there's that, but uh, yeah. Basically guys, what my theory is, is to go ahead and put a bunch of water in here and try to break that crap up so it'll go out the drain. The problem is you can tell the drain is just a trickling. Ah. We have a plug drain. We need to take that valve off, guys. Sorry for the background noise. My father has decided to start cutting grass. Making a lot of noise. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have to take that drain off there. Take that, that uh, valve off. Because uh, it's clearly plugged up. All right, this is not working like I had hoped, so let's go ahead and just unhook this thing. I kind of don't want to, though. It's such a pain. It's such a pain. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's so much crap in this tank yet. We're going to have to go for the full upside down move on this one. It's not going to come out that drain at all. It's way too big of chunks. Ah, I didn't want to do this, but that's okay. Let's do it.
All right, you guys, so I got all of the spraying done in the garden and uh, it's been some time we went and got lunch and stuff like that. But what I'm gonna do now is because I'm done spraying for the year, basically, I don't think I'm gonna spray that garden again uh, this fall. If we need to, we can work it this fall, which I would really like to do break out our disc and disc it up. But because this will be the last time we use the sprayer this fall, uh, I have put 25 gallons of water in it and I'm just gonna run that through to basically clean the sprayer. Though I will tell you guys, it took us a considerable amount of time to get the thing all the way cleaned out. Uh, we had to end up taking nozzles apart and the wand apart and I mean, you name it. That scummy stuff was everywhere in this sprayer. So yeah, like I said, 25 gallons of water, we're just gonna let it run out. And then I'm probably gonna do it one more time. By doing it twice, that should ensure that there's little to no chemical left in there. Of course, there's always going to be trace amounts of chemical, that's just the way it is. But it'll ensure that there's as small amount as possible. What I'm gonna do is I'll run the sprayer on the second tank. This first tank is just to try to dilute what's in there and flush it out. All right, guys, sliding into voiceover mode for this part. This is the week before. This is the prior week's footage. I didn't quite get enough, like I think I talk about in the video. Didn't quite get enough footage to be happy with it, so I decided to, uh, you know, just throw it in and make one long video for you guys. So basically what we're doing right now, guys, is we are cutting the white pumpkins, um, like I will explain later in the video as well, but I'll go ahead and tell you guys right here is that the white pumpkins will actually turn a little shade of blue. Uh, it's from the sunshine, and once the white pumpkins are mature, they really need to be pulled out of the sun to keep them white. Otherwise, they turn blue. So, we're not too hip on that idea. You guys can see the vines for the white ones are pretty well done. Um, but, you know, it's all good. Not as many out here as we had hoped. Uh, I will show you guys, like, a, a total at the end towards this, later in the video you know what i'm saying but uh yeah dad and i went out here and cut them all it was very hot and nasty this day so we got out there as soon as we got to the farm and got it done basically so now we need the tractor guys the 995 uh, third time out of the shed out here maybe fourth time something like that not enough not enough guys <laughs> not enough at all so we're gonna break out the 995 we're gonna go back to the combine shed or what we call the combine shed this is the shed where Grandpa used to store his combine, so it just kind of has the name of Combine Shed. It's just kind of how it works, you know? Anyway, so we're going to do something that we usually don't have to do, and that is pull out one of these wagons. Now, you guys might be saying, why do you have old crappy wagons in your shed? Um, they're actually the neighbors. They're one of the neighbors down there, the guys that used to rent the farm uh, before uh, they sold the farm, basically, before we sold the farm. Um, obviously you guys know we have five acres, but used to have 180. That's a whole nother thing for another video. But what I'm going to say is, um, we've had their wagons in our shed for a long time. Uh, we actually used to have three of them on the farm, but now we only have two and we don't use them very often. They don't use them at all. Basically. Um, the only reason they would need them is if there's a flood coming, they would throw a bunch of stuff on there and haul it up to some high ground. So the last time these wagons were out of the shed was like 2000 whatever, <laughs> 2000 whatever, when we had that flood scare. Um, we made a video about that where we drove the 995 into town. That's when these guys uh, would have been out of the shed, about 2016 maybe, something like that. But basically these things just set, you know, we do store some stuff on there occasionally, like our carrier for the Power King 1614 will winter over basically on top of this wooden wagon. So there's that. But we're going to get this old wagon out of here. Um, we thought it had a flat tire. However, it was just kind of sunk in the ground. <laughs> now, not saying the tires aren't low, of course, because, you know, it's been sitting for like two and a half years, two years, something like that. So, yeah, of course, your tires are going to be a little low. You know, it's just kind of to be expected, honestly, after sitting that long. But it's not a big deal, not a big deal at all. So the way we have these things packed packed into the shed, yeah, it's packed into the shed is, uh, you know, you have to get them out manually. So dad's on the back pushing. I'm up front on the tongue, obviously, steering and pulling. And uh, came out of the shed pretty easy. We've done this a few times, so it's not, uh, not too big of a deal to get it hooked up to the 995. 
yes, we could use one of our smaller tractors uh, to pull around this wagon. But, uh, you know, it's just kind of fun to break out the 995 and, you know, get busy. So I'm going to go ahead and blow off the trailer. There is um, mouse poop. <laughs> just, you know, come out and say it. Um, you know, there's a lot of mouse activity back in that building. Um, our big shed's pretty good because we keep the poison pretty heavy in there to, you know, take care of that. Back in that combine shed, yes, there are mice. Um, at one point in time, we had, you know, like that orange fencing you find on construction sites. We had a couple rolls of that on the trailer, and the mice got in there and chewed it up. Um, going to go ahead and add air to all the tires just because I can. And while I was doing that, Dad was pounding nails. And being up under the trailer, it was so obnoxiously loud. I was like, what are you doing, man? You're killing me. Just like, wait a minute, you know? <laughs> but it's good. Ah, uh, no worries. Just really loud. So he did stop and kind of let me, like, you know, do my thing. And then he's right back at it. <laughs> so I completely failed on getting footage of us actually picking up the pumpkins and stuff like that. But, you know, it happens. Uh, so later that same day, my buddy Casey came down. He's my next door neighbor. He wanted a couple pie pumpkins for his aunt, and that's what this is here. This is what's known as a pie pumpkin. Apparently, they're really good for making pies out of. So he came down and got a couple of them, and I just I filmed it, and I had to show you guys how thick that stem was on these pie pumpkins. That's crazy. He's having a heck of a time with that um, little cutter there trying to cut them. But let's go back to the video. So basically, as you guys can tell, I had a vlogger fail or a fail moment or whatever you want to call it. Basically, I completely failed you guys as far as getting footage uh, last week. So I kind of forgot my camera in the shed and uh, it was just, you know, it was just one of those things. So that's what I did film last week for those few clips there. What I will show you guys is the actual wagon. We did put it back here in the shed, of course. So you guys, we're in the combine shed, manure trailer, you know, brush hog, our disc is back there behind the manure trailer. So you guys, this is the wagon that we had out last week right here with our white pumpkins on it. We are honestly disappointed in our yield of our white pumpkins. You can see there's not that many. There's two different varieties. I don't know what you call this one. This one's, I mean, it's a good sized pumpkin, not gonna lie. Uh, we're hoping by bringing them in here out of the sun that they do not deteriorate oftentimes with these white pumpkins the longer they sit out in the sun they almost turn a little blue so we went ahead and pulled them early this year so we wouldn't have that problem as you can tell there's plenty of wagon left here if and only if it turns cool and wet between now and pumpkin day also known as our pumpkin picking party if it turns cool and wet between now and then we will be forced to go out in the pumpkin patch and pick every single pumpkin because otherwise they will rot. We have been having pumpkin day for, I would say at least 15 years and we've only had to do that one time. We had one of these wagons and a 16 foot trailer heaped with pumpkins. So kids were able to come down, there's a mosquito. Uh, kids were still able to come down and pick out their pumpkin. They were just not able to pick their pumpkin, but it still turned out just fine. Everybody was still happy and stuff like that. So I'm gonna wait for the sprayer to get it on. I'm gonna run a second tank through and I might throw some of that RV antifreeze in it today just to be done. Basically winterizing my sprayer before it's even October. Tomorrow's October for me. It's a week ago for you guys, but you know, tomorrow's October for me. So might as well winterize the sprayer, right? All right, you guys, I'm back out here with tank number two. This one I filled. There's probably almost 30 gallons in there. Yes, it's a 25 gallon sprayer. However, if you fill it to the tippy tippy top, it's probably more than 25 gallons. I'm just gonna go ahead and guess. So I'm gonna open up the the boom and I'm gonna go ahead and run it with our handy dandy remote switch. Go ahead and run the boom. So you might be able to tell it's running. The bubbles in there, the white, that's the chemical. It's running on the ground, which is fine not an ideal thing to do however it's okay so we'll go ahead and run a fair bit of water through there and i should probably at the same time go ahead and open the open the drain as well just to get out as much as possible to make this faster i gotta get going here today the other thing we want to do is run water through the gun of course there's the chemical at first 
and it changes over just to water. By the way, have you guys noticed anything that's not there anymore? Like behind me? Maybe? I'm not sure. Anyway, all the corn's gone around us. In this part of Missouri, eastern Missouri, there is no corn left, basically to speak of. It's pretty well all gone. Um, guys are working on soybeans already. And keep in mind that this was filmed a week before it goes live on YouTube. Yeah. It's an early harvest this year, boys. It's an early harvest. takes a lot to kind of get going. with that we are going to go ahead and call it a video but first I wanted to talk to you guys about the pumpkins the pumpkins are starting to die off it is that time that uh, the pumpkins just will start dying off that's just the way that it is um, we've had some cool nights here of course lots of bug damage but that's just to be expected I have been spraying them but it just happens so realistically from the time this video goes live there's only a couple weeks before our pumpkin party and so far looking at the pumpkin crop i would say that uh, we're pretty happy with our yield we'll call it how many pumpkins are actually out here i'm pretty happy with it so far except for the white ones that we picked last week or earlier in this video you know what i mean but overall we're pretty happy with them this year and we've already got ideas for next year of how we're going to change things and make things better and potentially have more pumpkins so today we're or right now we're still we're actually watering the pumpkins with our drip irrigation tape and this will be the last time that we actually water them this year here in a couple weeks we'll go through and start cutting the vines and pulling up our drip tape before our pumpkin picking party so you guys with that it is getting dark i believe the sun might already be set it's actually pretty dark out here uh, we're gonna go ahead and start heading into town here go get some dinner so I want to say thank you guys so much for watching another on the farm. I know this one was kind of all over the place. I'm hoping it's a little bit longer video. I hope. I know it was kind of all over the place though. Thank you guys so much for watching another on the farm. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, toodles.